Hi, my name is Jack DiGiovanna. I'm the Director of Programs at Seven Bridges. Excited to talk to you today about some of the capabilities of the Cancer Genomics Cloud and also give two quick demos of how you can interact with it to do joint calling over a trio, interactive analysis of the joint BCF that's produced, and then how you would start processing data at scale. For those of you unfamiliar, the Cancer Genomics Cloud started as a cloud pilot in 2014 from the NCI. And over the last five years, these pilots have evolved and matured into production grade resources that are within the Cancer Research Data Commons, the CRDC. The CRDC is shown here conceptually on the right, uh, all within the cloud, leveraging you know, the normal cloud capabilities, the strengths of compute, storage, uh, analysis. And there's a bunch of different data sources in here, genomics being the central one here coming from the GDC, but it's not just limited to genomics. There's also imaging. There could also be canine data. There could be clinical trial data, proteomics data. This are all brought together into this common framework. And the CRTC is also driven, the way it's developed over the last years has been very much in response to what would serve the users best. So along the bottom here, we're showing the diverse community of stakeholders that could use the CRDC and how they could interact with it. The value props of the CGC is that it helps researchers do more. And you know, that sounds kind of marketing-y, but that's, you know, that's really what it, what it is, what it enables that could be done. And along the bottom, foundational elements that make up this entire system. But as we saw in the diagram, it's secure, scalable, stable, cloud storage and compute platform. You can collaborate with folks in your lab, with people across the country, with entire consortium, and it's reproducible data analysis. This is really important. Think through to reviewer two who came back and said, hey, that study that you did two years ago, I need to know about exactly what this parameter was. I need you to rerun it in this way. Before that was quite hard. With this, you can just look directly into the task and spin it up immediately. <clears throat> when you join the CDC, you have immediate access to tools, compute, and data. Tools here represent workflows, are called pipelines, apps, and we have about 400 of them available that have already been optimized that you can use for free, no worries. Also on the bottom right here, we're showing our Rabbix editor, which is actually taking a workflow a collection of tools, all the blue nodes that you see in there, this is star, and it's adding on the end here um, a fusion tool. So you can extend the workflow, create new outputs, and now you have a new workflow that you can use in the cloud. You don't have to pull in pre-made tools, you can bring in your own, you can bring in uh, a machine learning algorithm to do dimensionality reduction on the output if you like. On the left side of the slide is, is looking into some of the data sets that are available in the CTC. Importantly, it's not just these data sets, but you can also bring up your own private data. And as I mentioned in the prior slide, you can collaborate with colleagues anywhere. The two demos I'm going to show are joint calling on an Askinism trio, what that looks like on the CGC, and then what would happen, how would you get to interactive analysis to be able to get deeper into it. Once that proof of concept is done, I want to show how you would do processing at scale. So you, you want to continue to do more joint calling, you're interested in lymphoma, how do you bring that in, how do you realign it, and how do you get the results? And I call this second demo getting to AIM-1 faster, which I'm, I'm stealing from one of our collaborators who was at a recent meeting and said, at my institution, it takes 18 months on average for people to get done in AIM-1 of their grant. And AIM-1 is supposed to just be the baseline. I'm going to bring some data together, run my analysis on it before I generate new data so I can have a baseline. And we're going to get through the second demo in less than three minutes. I, I clocked it just yesterday, so this is how we get to AIM-1 faster. Switching screens now to the CGC, the overall dashboard. It's a project-based system, so there's a number of projects I'm involved in, different uh, analyses that I've run. So if I open up the project for this conference, I can see a description. There are two members in this project, myself and Anna. This was already a collaboration just to generate this demo because Anna should get credit for all the work. She made the workflow, she organized the inputs, she also made the Jupyter notebook that we're gonna talk through later. Uh, for me, I, I just edited it a little bit. I made some of the Jupyter notebook a little prettier, but already we collaborated just to show you this demo. In the bottom right here are the analysis that I've run. These are the tasks. So clicking over to here, you can see this is the output of the joint calling. So the way a task page is organized, you can see 
what was used. So we used spot and memoization here. We, this ran in an hour and a half. It ran using this particular workflow. The inputs are shown here on the left. So here's the trio that was brought in along with different uh, reference files. Anna really locked it down so there was only two settings I could set, which is nice. This is, helps reduce user error. So I could just set this one link setting. And here are the outputs of the task. I can look into any one of the outputs as you would expect. If there was metadata on the inputs, it would propagate through to the outputs. We'll actually see that in the second demo. We don't see it here. But in terms of reproducibility, I see that this output, I see the other outputs that came out of the task. I see the task that ran. So if I ever had a question, so anybody questioned me on these outputs, I could get back to what was the task that created it. I could see what was the configuration of that task. I could even see what was the application that was used in that task and revisions and different things like that. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to go back now to the output. And uh, of course, from this table, I can look and see what is the raw data. And it's as you would expect, it's a nice table. But this isn't exactly what I want out of joint calling. right? I, I, I want to get to investigating the variance, the coverage depth. If I look at the joint VCF, I just see that I have well, a, a encrypt, a compressed 680 megabyte file. So what I want to do next is stay within this project, but go to interactive analysis. So after I ran that task, that basically said, OK, I want to do joint calling. Go grab an instance, load in this data, do the compute, give me the results, and spin down the instance. So that's very much a, a straightforward like input-output processing without any modification along the way. But what if we wanted to interactively analyze things? You think, well, I, I do that in our studio. I do that in Python. Well, here we have the capability staying within the project to do exactly the same thing. So we have something called Data Cruncher here, and we could create a new analysis. So whether you want to use Python, R Studio, Jupyter Lab, whatever compiler you like, you start to create this. And you can select which type of instance you want to have. So it could be a very small instance, it could be a considerably larger instance. Importantly here, there's a suspend time, which you can you can also turn this off, but you can set this for an hour or two, which prevents me from going to get a cup of coffee, seeing something shiny, getting distracted, and then forgetting about this instance and getting a giant bill later. Instead, this will say after 30 minutes, shut it down, and save everything first, then shut it down. I'm not going to set one up because I've already got one running here. I'll just jump to this tab. This is a Python notebook. For those of you not familiar, everything in you know white here is markdown. This is just descriptive. Everything in gray is the Python code. I've already run a bunch of this because for the sake of time. But here we've uh, imported hail. We followed a tutorial that's available in the link to bring in 1000G data and format it into a matrix table. Once it's formatted into a matrix table, you can start to explore it here, showing here uh, the first few rows, showing the first few sample IDs. And you can start to do things like look at the coverage depth across samples. So here are this histogram. You see that it's about 9 or 10 uh, for all the different samples. Annotations are critically important for computing a GWAS, so here we're starting to bring these annotations together. And then you get into quality control. So you can do sample level QC, uh, look at the call rates, you could do genotype quality, you know, all these different things. And this is in the notebook. I could share this afterwards for anybody who's interested. Start to plot things like the depth of coverage versus the call rate. More interestingly, of course, is how do I use Hail for my data? How do you get to that data that we just finished uh, on the project? So you can add files from your project, and that's just as easy as going into the Project Files tab here, remembering what we call the output files, and pulling this one up. It'll copy the path. I can change this here in the code to bring in that particular file. I've already run this because it takes a little bit of time. I don't want to wait for the demo. But I do the same thing. So I bring in the data that we generated for the joint called VCF and format it into a matrix table. Now we can start to explore it in the same way as the 1000G data. And this is going in real time, so you can see how, how fast it is. We're just doing some very simple things here, visualizations. Now we can start to look at the coverage depth for all of those samples. Here we see it's you know, better coverage considerably than the 1000G data, so it's around 40 or 50. 
It's also calculating what are the outliers, so very high or very low coverage, and as well doing sample level quality control. So getting into um, you know, how does the data change once you do this quality control. And of course, once you do quality control, we can start to again look at that in plots. Looking into a histogram here of the genotype quality that's being generated. Uh, since it's sample based, it's you know if there's only a trio. There's only three of them. It looks you know not as impressive as having all of the thousand G, but you can see it's pretty decent sample quality here. Uh, we can also do variant using the health function variant QC. Uh, do that on the data, and start to look at mean uh, variant genotype quality. Uh, see this distribution, and now. Um, how could you use HAL to rapidly process this? We could go into <coughs> looking at all the rows and applying some filters. We had you know, 6.7 million rows here. We use the filter rows uh, function, and we could see that we reduce it about 600,000 variants and, and replot this. And as this is plotting, you know, this is nice to do interactively and see these results. But what's also important to remember is this can be injected right back into the task that we ran before. So instead of just getting the two ugly tables out at the end, you could also say, well, I definitely want to have genotype quality for each of the three samples, and we can render that in HTML as an output of the task. So that's how we could do uh, interactive analysis. I'm going to stop the analysis now because we're done. It'll save it. It'll, all my collaborators will be able to see it. And the question is, that, that single example is nice. How do we get to being able to do this at scale? So what if we wanted to look at all the lymphoma data for TCGA and, and bring that in, process that? Well, we'd go to the data browser. This is the data browser. It's showing all the different data sets that can be explored on the CGC. We can look here at the TCGA. We also have capability to look across multiple data sets and look for the intersection or cases that are involved in all three and do some very interesting analysis there. It's beyond the scope of this demo. So let's just look at TCGA. You don't, as a user, need to know the exact ontology or how the entities are related in TCGA metadata. We can help you here with this search. We can say we want to look into FOMA. Select that and we want BAM files. And give some examples of what types of queries might work in order to get that, what we're looking for. I pre-save the query here to help us find it. And this query, to explain it, it has cases with lymphoma. These cases need to have a matched tumor and blood-derived normal pair. Each of those samples needed to generate files which are processed with whole exome sequencing. And here I'm adding uh, also that I want the BAM files that were produced from primary tumor. When I do that, I can upload the statistics here that's showing of the 11,000 cases in TCGA, 37 of them match these criteria, and 37 files, 37 BAM files exist. I can see the metadata for any particular file here. As I said earlier, this metadata can be propagated through. And I can see the list of files here. There's red locks on these, meaning these are controlled access files. So when I go to copy them, we're going to check my ERA Commons ID to see am I authorized to do this. This will be a, a federated authorization through the Gen 3 services uh, with the NIH. So we go to copy these. I pick the project that I want them to go to. There's a nice helper function here that says you're looking for BAM files, but guess what? There's also index files. We're going to bring them along for you, which is great. And I can add in tags if I like to help find things later. I can say I want to call these tumor. It's going to copy them. It's actually just made pointers. It's not moving any data, but they're available now in our project. So we have the files that we want to process. We're missing the app. We want to get these BAMs to FastQs now. That's no problem. We'll go to our app store, public apps. And I know Picard has a tool that can do this. So Picard FastQ. <clears throat> Picard Sam to FastQ. Take a quick look at this. There's the description, licenses, different things. Yep, this looks like just the one we want. So I'll copy it into our project. Now it's available in the project. To use this app, we're just going to go here and click Run. This will create a new task for us. 
as before, this one isn't completed, so we don't have a runtime or output, so we see the same organization of inputs here in this panel, settings here. I'm going to select the files that we want for an input. We can say that we want to have uh, clear the selection. Just want to bring in BAM file. And select here, there'll be 37 of them that we input. It's tried to load these into the task, but it's showing an error, which isn't great for a demo, but actually this is a feature and not a bug. This particular app is designed to only take a single input and produce four outputs. Here we're trying to give it 37 inputs, and our validation system is saying, hey man, don't do that. But there's a, there's a solution. We can make a batch task. This will allow our, our executor to look at this and say, fine, you have 37 inputs. We'll just create 37 tasks for you. Now here, before we were doing trios, here we're doing individual files, so it might not always be best to go by files. Maybe you want something deeper in the metadata. That's fine. We can batch on any of the metadata associated with the file. Here I'm going to pick sample UUID. This might be something like family ID, which would spin up batches of trios or different things like that. It's a very powerful system. Depending how the files are described, you can create tasks appropriately. Here, since there's, you know, there's one UUID per file, it's going to do the same thing. I can edit certain parameters here. So I pick one, I'm going to make this a warning. And then to process all this data, it's just as simple as pressing run. It warns me, hey, you're going to make 37 tasks. I'm good with that. It's creating its child's tasks here. So it's taking those inputs and generating all the, the outputs. I'll refresh the page quickly. And we could already start to see that it's making those different tasks. Keep the demo under time, I'm going to do this cooking show style, and I'll switch over to the cooking show project, just as I said, where I've already run that task a few days ago. And here was the batch task where it was. All of that processing was done in about 20 minutes. We can look at this particular one that ran. It cost nine cents to run this, and we went from the BAM file to a pair of fast queues here. That can be used for further processing. Also, in terms of collaboration, as I said, uh, I collaborated a lot with Anna to be able to give this demo. If we want to share these results of, of this batch, I could bring in other members, I can invite Panisha as well, to be able to analyze the data. And it's as easy as choosing which permission she has. I can say, well, she can do anything she likes. Or I can say, well, if she was just, say, a master's student, I just want her to have read, so I'll give her a copy. She's invited, now she can work with this data as well. So that's the end of the demo. Finally, I want to close by sharing that users are leveraging the CGC to complete real research. So just in the past month, we had two groups that are using the CGC extensively publish their results in one in Nature Biotech, another one in Molecular Cell. We're getting you know, multiple publications from some groups that have been using the CGC. They're up to their fourth journal paper now. There's thousands of users, use, ran over 900,000 tasks probably by this point, over 1,000 years of compute, and looking at a number of very different important research topics. I'd love for you to try it today. You can register for a free account at cancergenomicscloud.org. The NCI has provided $300 of cloud credits for you to use for storage, for you to use for compute. To give you an idea, as we showed in that demo, the, the joint calling cost about a dollar, uh, 80 cents. Each one of those realignments cost nine cents. So $300 is a good amount to get started. You can really start to get into it. There's also opportunities to get additional funding to do larger projects. All of this is listed out at cancergenomicscloud.org. Please go check it out today and sign up, set up for a free account. Also, if you have any questions, please contact the CGC team, cgc at sbgenomics.com. Thanks so much for your time and have a great day.